All right, and welcome to part three of the 600XL upgrades series. This is the final part. Um, reasonably self-contained. Uh, the first part described some common upgrades you might want to do uh, to a machine which remained uh, fundamentally stuck. The second part uh, looked at installing Ultimate One Megabyte, and now we're going to have a look at installing Sophia DVI. Um, so I've got a nice little bundle of parts here, which I'm just going to... Uh, spread out. I don't think I need the socket actually because I've already fitted one. So here's the DVI board itself and this of course goes into the GTI socket. I think the left connector is a programming connector, uh, kind of an ISP connector if you like for upgrading the firmware and the right hand connector is the actual DVI output uh, connector. And uh, I believe there's a, a new version of this being worked on uh, by Simeus. Um, uh, if I seem a little bit stilted, it's because I, I must have slept funny, <laughs> because I can barely turn my head to the right. Uh, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, problematic, but never mind. I'm looking at the monitor um, screen here. There we I've just boosted the brightness just a little bit. That's going to go into the GTIA socket, which I, and I've already put a socket under the GTIA chip. Uh, there's the cable that connects the uh, DVI adapter to the board and there's the DVI adapter itself which we're going to mount uh, right on the PCB using the little holes that are helpfully uh, positioned on the bottom of the board and you even get some standoffs here. So this is one of two uh, DVI boards that I've uh, purchased, one for the uh, client. Uh, the other one went into my 1088 XEL here uh, which I'll, I'll probably do another video showing you the inside. Uh, and this is no slight on DVI so fear at all. Uh, but the fact is I've already got VBXE in here, although the uh, the sharpness and quality from DVI Sophia is uh, arguably superior. I mean VBXE is very good as well. Um, but it had this, uh, just a hole in the back here just waiting for a DVI connector and I thought it was, I thought it was cruel uh, not to actually uh, put a connector in there. Uh, and of course it, it, it works wonderfully well. Uh, it's just nice to have everything in there, have the, the device completely maxed out, as it were. Ow, my neck. So uh, anyway, so let's uh, take this 600XL apart. So I haven't got the board screwed in, so it's just going to lift right out, like so. And we'll do a test fit, uh, just to see how it's going to go. So we've already got a nice precision socket in here. Now I think um, it's going to clear the... I think it's going to clear the side of this chip here, but it isn't going to clear this one, unfortunately. If we, if we look uh, sideways on, it's going to hit that. So that, that's the, is that the audio amp? Yeah, I think it is. So uh, we're going to have to take that off. So while we wait for the um, desoldering gun to uh, heat up, let's just uh, put a little bit of extra uh, solder on these pins here. And the desoldering uh, gun is working very nicely indeed now, it has to be said, since we've changed the filters on it. There we go, clean it. Cleaning device in here. There's tubes blocked at the back. So we're going to heat that up. Come on, come on. Oh, here we go. Finally. There we go. I should probably took the chip out, actually. It would have probably come out a lot quicker if it had another chip sitting in the socket. Yes, that looks good. No problem. So let's take the chip out of the socket. You could do fancy stuff like putting it on the back of the board, but it's it's simply not um, necessary in this case, and it's not really going to get you anywhere. So, so hopefully this video is going to be a little bit better quality than some of the previous ones as well, because the uh, the bit rate I like to use the uh, Nvidia encoder, and the bit rate somehow in open broadcasting is a two and a half megabits per second which is absolutely pathetic and the nvidia encoder needs needs a lot of bits 
needs a high bit rate so I've cranked it up to about uh, by a factor of four I think um, obviously it makes for bigger uh, video files uh, but uh, the quality should be a lot better so there's our chip uh, sitting on the board this should now push down flat and it does Sophia's flat on the board now great thing about this is we can test it straight away without making any additional connections it should just power up one thing I wanted to do which I actually forgot to do was order some board mounted uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jacks so that I could get audio out of the machine when it's using DVI without having to screw the connector to the back of the case love this monitor if you can if you can still find one the LG M227WD uh, the WDP is probably okay as well this one's got an S video uh, connector on the back the DP I think just has uh, S video on SCART but it's probably just as good so let's see if we get a picture we do eventually it takes a while for it to pick up but <laughs> there it is Right, so we need to figure out which uh, little mounting positions are going to work out here. It's obviously it's going to be the two at the back, furthest towards the back of the board. I'm going to put two pins in there, and then we've got two rows of uh, little vias at the front here or at the back. I'm going to populate with pins the two vias at the very edge, furthest to the left, as you see them on the screen and the four at the very very back and I believe that's going to line up just perfectly. And you want to get this right first time because it's um, not the easiest thing in the world to get these removed cleanly if you put them in the wrong holes uh, which I did manage to do last time to say. So since we're going to reuse this uh, part of this uh, modulator hole at the back we don't want to mount this too low otherwise the the slot's going to be too high for the connector. Now the hole is about four millimeters off the bottom of the board so yeah it doesn't want to be totally flush as if we put these on uh, upside down initially and then we can push the plastic housing to suit what we want. The first two standoffs, I'm, I'm going to push that plastic housing up until it's, it's just the right height where I want this to sit. I'll do that and then we'll just check that they're on straight, reasonably straight. There we go. So there's our little adapter anchored on all sides, or on three sides at least. So I've pushed that up a little bit so that it's more or less at the height I want it at. Do correspondingly pull the other ones down. Oh, it drops straight in, no problem. Oh, it's missed, missed the back one. There, so it's, there it is, it's, it's sitting on the legs. And really it's just a question now of just finessing everything and making minor adjustments to the height and such uh, until it's absolutely correct. And then we can solder everything in. So um, I've showed you how to cut holes in the case before, if you, if you can't remember, if you go back to a prior video about um, an 800XL, uh, which required exactly the same thing done to the case, I showed you all of that, I went through the whole thing, I'll link to it, because it's a faff to fill them all the drilling and the mess and the filing and stuff like that, it's exactly the same process, uh, it might actually be a good idea not to solder this in height wise until you've got the hole cut at the back. Uh, and then you can adjust this so that it's at the perfect height. I think I'll try doing that this time. So I'll go away now and cut the hole and then I'll come back and we'll line everything up and uh, see how it looks. All right, there we are. That's that's what I call the rough cut. Uh, it's not dressed properly yet, but it's uh, basically a hole of a suitable size. So let's just test uh, how things go together. Of course, there's nothing soldered in yet, but I just want to see how it's going to look. So if I drop that down by pushing those black plastic housings on the uh, standoff uh, header pins 
I think that's going to look perfect. It might not even need a, uh, a blanking plate at the back, which would be nice because uh, I hate doing them. I think that looks okay as it is. Well, I think it's going to look really nice. And of course, I'll put a, I'm going to drill a hole here as well for the headphone jack. So uh, now to mount the uh, actual adapter board. So I'll just push this a little bit that way. Oh yes, yeah, that works for me. Does it work for you? It's a little bit to one side, but uh, uh, it's actually at a slight angle. I don't know if it can be twisted around a little bit, possibly. I think we will try and extend this rear slot a little bit. And I think that will allow the thing to sit perfectly. That's much better. So I'm going to solder that in just as it is. That looks pretty nice. So we'll just tack at the back here and then I'll push down from the top to make sure it's flat. I'm going to push too hard because I don't want anything to move. I don't want the little plastic lugs to move. Let's see how this looks. Perfect! And I don't think I need to put a blanking plate there to be quite honest. I think it looks okay. I'll ask the owner if he wants a blanking plate but I think it looks quite nice as it is. The blanking plate is horrible because I make it out of a uh, tin can aluminium sheet and it's very flimsy. I used to have some slightly thicker stuff but I don't anymore so I have to cut the aperture out with a knife and it usually takes about three tries to get it right and it's it's, it's not pleasant, it's not fun at all. So uh, if I can avoid doing that, I will. So let's finish this. I'm not going to absolutely fill these uh, holes with solder, I just want to basically get it so that it's uh, connected. So that's the bottom of it. I see you could flood fill those uh, vias if you wanted to, but I'm I'm not going to at the moment. I just don't want to melt the plastic on the top side. Uh, so just to give you a good look at how the thing is mounted. And that's, as you've seen, it sits perfectly. Uh, in the case, so now we can put our cable in. I'll probably uh, half the length of that cable at some point. Just our audio jack now, uh, which is going to be this. So I'm just going to short out the left and right channels uh, and attach uh, an audio pick off to one and ground to the other. Uh, do be careful with these because there's two, well, they're like two fuses now. Whatever revision of the board you have, you'll have some resistors there. I once let the housing of the stereo jack, which was just on a couple of wires, flop onto this while it was switched on, and the machine actually started to let the magic smoke out. I uh, shorted them to ground, I had to replace the resistors. So, no permanent damage done, but nevertheless, it would uh, be better if it didn't happen. So, just be careful about letting anything metallic drop on top of here because it's uh, you will make it pop. All right, so I've shortened the uh, ribbon cable going to the Sophia DVI which was relatively straightforward you just have to carefully prise the um, clip off uh, from either side and then you can put it in a desk vise. Um, the trick is keeping the cable square with the top connector uh, which has the guides for the ribbon. Uh, top tip if you put the top half of the connector over the ribbon cable and then attach it with a piece of tape so that it's in the correct position uh, that will keep things right when it's in the vise. So I've done that. Uh, I've attached the uh, audio jack. I've just run the wire here just to the front edge of this resistor, uh, which is a direct uh, connection to the audio pin of the monitor jack. And I've taken ground uh, here, the front of the old RF box. So let's test it. And I'll plug the audio in. Being careful not to short anything out here, of course, as I mentioned before. All right, let's get a nice view of the monitor. Switch on. There we are. I think the only thing to do now is to uh, pop the board in the case and see how it looks. And just another look uh, at the case itself. Um, I've just put the top on while I was waiting to finish the uh, board. So there's our headphone jack. Uh, and there's the hole for the DVI connector and it should look uh, reasonably good when it's all put back together. Like so I chamfered the hole for this uh, audio connector but not a massive amount. Um, just enough just to make it look neat basically. So there, I mean the board isn't screwed in yet but uh, there it is. Just uh, as I say I don't, I don't even think this needs the um, 
a blanking plate around it which is a nightmare to make I think it looks pretty neat as it is to be quite honest I'll uh, ask the owner what he wants to do and I just wanted to clarify actually in the in the previous video when I was trying to put the machine back together and it was it seemed to be uh, blocking on top of the ultimate it wasn't actually that it was it's this daughter board for the keyboard actually <laughs> this tends to drift over to the right and if you just nudge it so that it's more or less upright you, you find the machine goes together no problem at all and it's just sitting loose on the bottom of the case there and it's it is an absolute perfect fit so once the strain relief clips are off the ultimate one megabyte you have no problems whatsoever uh, with fit and finish internally and it just looks uh, everything fits perfectly and it looks great uh, there we have it 600XL Sophia, first one I've ever done. I think it looks pretty nice. Um, I would have preferred a board mounted uh, jack for the headphone. I, I did, I say, I did mean to buy some, I forgot to. Um, I wasn't even 100% sure what I was going to get. And of course, there's the additional issue that there's a lot of traces on the bottom of this board, so trying to mount it to the board mightn't have worked out as well as I hoped, but there we are. So there's everything plugged in at the back. Uh, let's turn on again. There we go. And just for those of you who haven't seen the uh, the sharpness of DVI uh, video, so here's a look at the back of the machine, fully assembled, and uh, I think you'll agree, it looks very nice indeed. So there you have it, we've reached the end of the line with the 600XL. Uh, it's uh, had everything done to it that it's going to have done to it for the uh, foreseeable future. It's been uh, renovated cosmetically, it's been, it's had the video improved, it's had uh, Sophia installed, it's had Ultimate 1 megabyte installed and of course it's had the base memory upgraded to 64 kilobytes and uh, looks very nice indeed I'm sure the owner will be absolutely over the moon with it as am I. So uh, I hope you found that interesting as ever and uh, if you would like to see more of this kind of thing uh, please subscribe to the channel, uh, click the bell if you want to be notified of new videos. I'm toying with the idea of doing uh, some live streams in the future now that I've got the setup working a little bit better again. I'm not absolutely sure but we'll see. Yeah if you enjoyed it uh, let me know and uh, leave your comments below. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.